Congressman Daryl Issa is here giving his first TV interview since announcing he's not running for re-election. And exclusively on 10 News this morning, he's announcing who he's endorsing to take his spot. We are eager to get to the announcement, but before we do that, you know, you have a lot of supporters. They would love for you to set the record straight because there have been some political blogs saying that if fellow Congressman Duncan Hunter's seat opens up, that you would be open to running for that seat. And so many people are asking us, is that true? Well, you know, Virginia, there's a lot of things that I can do, and hopefully I'll continue to be in public service in some other role. But, you know, I've done this. I've had the honor of doing this for 18 years. And you have to ask, you know, if not now, when? And, uh, you know, this is a good time. It's a, it's a midterm. I think it's a good transition time. They're not, a presidential year is a hard year for a new candidate to be understood and heard. Uh, and so my endorsed choice uh, although not new, will have a better opportunity to introduce herself to uh, voters in a different way, even though she already represents them. And you never used the word retirement. You said, I'm not running for re-election here. Uh, we, we may be seeing a shift in your district in the 49th, where the San Diego portion may be turning blue, plus the flip the 49th group has thrown hundreds of thousands of dollars at this seat. Did that all play into why you're not running for re-election? Actually, with Jane Fonda, Hanoi Jane uh, putting $100,000 in along with other liberals out of Hollywood. It actually was getting me thinking I should stay just to, uh, to have the fight. But you know, that's not really the right reason to stay or go. You know, I've chaired important committees. I've formed a couple of nonprofits that uh, do open government and I'll continue to be involved with those in Washington. I have a passion for that. And uh, my successor also has a, a passion for opening up and make government more accountable. So uh, for me, it gives me an opportunity to serve on nonprofits and uh, be involved in other areas. I'm not walking away from politics, but I do think at some point you have to become the senior statesman uh, rather than answering the bell. And uh, again, I've had 18 years. I've been able to vote my district and my conscience uh, every single time. And if I stayed, I would do the same thing. So no more public office for you in San Diego? Well, I don't know of one that, that, uh, that's open. I don't know <laughs> one of I, I'd run for. And I think just to put the cards on the table, uh, look, Duncan Hunter has accusations that are over three years old about a mistake his wife made. And as far as I know, that's the only thing that's been made public. And so if they're going to endlessly investigate and make allegations about old things, I think the voters have to understand that's old news. Uh, you know, you never say never and you never, you never say that, you know, that you can vouch for somebody. But I serve with Duncan Hunter. He cares about the men and women in the military. He has gone back and forth on that same flight I've gone back and forth on since his father retired. And I'm not going to further that kind of, of speculation uh, when, in fact, he tells me he's running. I've endorsed him. And, uh, you know, uh, unless something changes, uh, I won't have to look to endorse another candidate. Congressman, it's expected to be a crowded field for your seat um, come, come the primary. And well, let's and Jason, get to your endorsement. And Jason, there's a good reason for that. And the reason is this is a very winnable seat. Uh, and our polls show that the candidate I'm endorsing can and will win the seat. And you're, the candidate you're endorsing is here. Is can here. we talk about Please, Diane come on Hockey? In. Well, Diane is not new. She already represents every single person in this district uh, at the Board of Equalization. And of course, she represented most of the district as a state assembly person. So she's probably more skilled coming to office than I was. And, and, and so, and that's the reason for your endorsement, is that you feel as though her experience? I think it's the fact that she's had to battle the bureaucracy in Sacramento, and she's had to deal with a tax code that continues to be troublesome for, uh, you know, employers, for job creators. And so she comes with both a good record in voting, but also with something that you can't, you can't find in somebody that comes new into the scene. And that is that solid understanding of what it's going to take to keep California uh, in the spotlight. One thing that, uh, that she did was she was solidly behind uh, a no vote, which was unusual for Republicans, but it, it hurt our district uh, in that latest tax reform bill. And so that's just some of the many reasons. But I've known Diane as a public servant for a long time. And, and what does it mean to you, Diane, to have the, the endorsement of, of Congressman Issa? Well, I'm, I'm extremely honored. I mean, he served his district extremely well. He's uh, very experienced. He's a, a business person, uh, quite successful in his own right. And the fact that we had the service for so long really says a lot. Um, I think I hope to carry on with that sort of representation. I've always represented my constituents. I speak for my constituents and I try very, very hard to represent them. I get around the district. I have a good uh, 
uh, feeling for all of the, for the business issues, having served on the Board of Equalization, and having resolved cases for over 400 constituents. We focused a lot in San Diego. There's a lot of small business down here. There's a lot of, lot of big business. And my, my focus will be business. It will be the military, uh, you know, national security issues, uh, transportation, and water and also uh, mental health issues. I have a great affinity for mental health issues. I think they're, they're underserved. It's probably fair to say that because of your experience in Orange County that voters know you pretty well there. Maybe not as well here in San Diego. What do you want to say as a special message to voters here in San Diego? Well, having served both counties in the assembly, I got to learn a lot about North County because it's going to be North County and South Orange County and we have the same uh, water, the uh, Regional Water Quality Board, we have the same transportation networks, they, they coordinate, uh, you know, your Sandag Borders works with OCTA, uh, you know, just about everything, the housing issues, the suburban and urban, um, the uh, open space, the beaches, the water quality. Yeah. They're all the same. We have beautiful beaches in this district, and I'm very, very strong on preserving that. I've seen them improve in my years in California to get to where now we have some, some really nice, beautiful, almost uh, you know, tropical-looking ocean waters that I want to preserve. Well, thank you both for being here. We're out of time. And, and Congressman, you. we didn't even get a chance to ask you about the budget, DACA, the wall, all that stuff in our district that matters to people. So maybe you can come back. I'm not maybe going away, and uh, people can go to our, my website okay. and look at our DACA fix, okay. which is already a submitted piece of legislation. Well, as a matter of fact, too, tenure tanker Renee Nelson from our Live Center will be continuing our conversation with Congressman Issa and Mrs. Harkey on Facebook Live here just in a minute. So if you want to look at that, just check it out. Go to our 10 News Facebook page and you'll be seeing it happening as it unfolds. All right.